Okay, hello everybody. This is Sushki for uh, Moki Moki's channel. Uh, in fact, uh, I have another friend with me, uh, Nick Widmar. Well, hello there. Uh, General Kenobi. <laughs> General Kenobi. Uh, and uh, today we are presenting to you this basically never before seen version of Monarchs. At least I believe that it is never before seen. Um, because I think it was theorized in the summer of 2017 or 2018, I think. Yeah, so um, something like that. Uh, we built it together. It's, it is much. mostly his work because he did all the testing. I was just, uh, you know, brainstorming ideas. Um, but to start it off, I would like to say that the basic idea for the deck we actually got from uh, another list. Uh, and the main idea, I think, to launch this list was the two Asuras, right? N yeah, beside that, it was the Big Shield Garden, I, I suppose. Mm. I, I don't know, it's uh, it's mostly Asura and Garna, the two monsters previously not used in Monarch decks. I mean, uh, Garna was a bit used, but not Asura, so we actually played around those two cards, I would say, and we pretty mm. much modified the original deck. Um, put out some inconsistent card and yeah, we tested really, really hard and got to where we are now. So I think that I actually, let me see, I think I have the uh, original deck somewhere here. Uh, yes, well, I do you... have, look at it. Uh, we can just take a look to see what the deck was. <laughs> As you see, the only similarities are the Asura, um, Gardna, Serpent Sangan, Behemoth, and Zaborg. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we did start testing with this one, right? Yeah, we started with this one, yeah. And at first sight, when Siushke was not really familiar with Monarchs, this deck really was like, it was like a storm, obliterating everything. We really had no idea how to play against Monarchs, but at the time when you get used to Monarchs, it's pretty obvious when a model is gonna drop and yeah so okay we went from that to this <laughs> uh yeah okay so uh let's start from the beginning um uh, yeah well yeah i mean okay first... just go ahead it's it's your your podium now well yeah um First thing, before I start with the setup, I can tell you that uh, I tested this deck uh, throughout the uh, Slovenian GOAT series that were taken in Ljubljana, I, uh, I think in 2019 and 18. Uh, that was something like that, right, Alan? Yeah, actually, let me just quickly... Yeah, uh, and the deck did really good. At first, uh, it was like meh, something in between, but then when uh, me and Alan play tested a lot and added cards, removed some, and when I really got to know other decks, the deck became really good and I managed to win or be top a lot, right? Uh, I had a really positive score uh, in some uh, tournaments I was missing and others, other people took my place, but the deck uh, really proved itself worthy, I would say. Okay, I, I've, or, uh, I see you won here, you won two events. Yeah. Uh, but, but unfortunately, it, to... it doesn't yeah. show your exact deck list. But from the thumbnail, yeah, we can I, see I that did, it was a bit different. I didn't upload it, as you remember. You know, you asked me if you could upload it, and I said right. no because I wanted the deck to remain uh, secret for a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. So if we come to the deck list, uh, first of all, let's start with monsters. So we got we six. Yeah. <laughs> Do it like that. Yeah, we have 16 monsters, so um, first let's add, uh, let's start with Sangen, uh, which um, has multiple targets. That uh, that first one is Sinister Serpent, then we go to Big Shield Gardner, and the last one is Twin-Headed Behemoth. Um, uh, <clears throat> the idea behind these cards uh, is that all of these cards are cards are really good for monarchs. First of all, Sinister Serpent is just, you know, a staple that works brilliantly. You can just summon it and then tribute it or discard it for any reason. You can use it with Metamorphosis, or, but I'll, I'll come to that later. Um, the main power boss, the power rule is the Big Shield Garner. Yeah, <laughs> you heard me right. You heard it first time here. The Big Shield Garner is the only monster in my deck 
that I actually set. And the reason why is because I want to negate opponent's nobleman of cross out. That, make, that makes uh, two of his cards pretty much useless without Book of Moon or, or Tsukuyomi. Uh, most of the times people have no idea I play Big Shield Garner. And when I set monster, they're just happy to use knock. And you know, Big Shield Garner pops up and negates that knock. And as you know, you have a card advantage. And that's really, really nice because no one expected. And even in a later game, you know, if your opponent is not sure what you've set and it's, uh, I don't know, perhaps it's already time and you're playing for damage uh, with those big uh, defensive points, you know, you can really put a big hit on them. The third one, third target for Sangan is the Twin Headed Behemoth. You pretty much use it for its effect because it bounces back. It's really good for uh, just putting pressure on the field because it, it's still a big uh, beat stick for a lot of monsters. Uh, if you're playing against standard gold control, you can pretty much run over uh, almost everything. And the second thing that's really good, it it does not die to Tsukuyomi. So that's really a big thing. Um, uh, and but just know, to point it out, uh, and this, unfortunately, it doesn't work if it is tribute summoned, but it will provide yeah. fodder regardless, because if it dies, then it will <laughs> come back. Yeah, and then you can tribute. That's actually a good thing, because if if it dies in your opponent's face, you know, you will have a flutter for another turn and, you know, you can just pop another monarch and destroy whatever he has. So, you know, it's really good to have a card like that uh, if you're not having any, as I call it, monarch spells or tribute spells like Soul Exchange, Brain Control, Metamorphosis. And it's really just a generic good monster. Yeah, so, so right, you, you came to this idea that uh, I want to point out... Uh, that you want to keep your deck connected on many levels, you know, not just monarchs and soul exchange mm -hmm. or just monarchs and flips, but you do want to have some intricacies, like you said, you just want to have some f floaters like this for uh, Sang, yeah, Behemoth, uh, Serpent, and Garna. I, I think I should put out that this is uh, an aggro deck and it does not use any flip monster or whatsoever. The reason behind this, I really wanted to get back to um, controlling the goat control. So by that, I mean, uh, when I was in Ljubljana and we were playing, m most of the people uh, I really <coughs> struggle against were the goat control players because monarchs are really good aggro decks and the only thing they have trouble with is just standard goat control with so many flip monsters. Um, Magicians of Fate, Tsukuyomis, and BLS's Thousand Dice Restricts. You know, I, I needed to play against that, and I needed to learn how to play against that. So this is how the deck became to be. So uh, further on, you can see um, I'm playing BLS, so that require uh, requires uh, light and dark monsters. First of all, for lights, we have um, two Asura Priests and uh, two Blade Knights. Let me tell you why I have this, because um, some people argue that it's not good. First of all, Asura Priest is a generic level 4 monster, which is really good for Monarch, because it returns to hand, does not stay on the field, and it puts pressure on opponent's scapegoats. And it's literally the only card besides uh, Torrential Tribute that gets rid of all of tokens in one go. And Usually, opponents are forced to use something like Sakuretsu Armor, or Mirror Force, or even Torrental, which is brilliant. And uh, the second case is uh, you can quickly put it in your graveyard and have a flutter for BLS or anything else. Uh, second card here, uh, Blade Knight, is also used because it's a level 4 light monster that has a unique effect that hates flip monsters. So, as I said, my main goal was to beat. Um, goat control and blade knight really helps me with that the reason behind this bec is because uh, it negates opponents flip monsters if it's the only card on the field so that's really a great way to start it as you see i packed up my deck deck only with beaters and the cards that actually help me uh, further on we have okay just of course, uh, let me I... wait me uh, stop you here to ask you preventively some questions that might pop up anyway later if we don't yeah sure Go them. so to summon the monarchs you need to keep the field presence and to keep the field yeah, presence you need a monster so then the oh. most most people say okay then asura is really counterproductive for this strategy yeah but as i said 
A surah is here not just only for BLS, it is here because most of the times uh, your pace stops when opponent summons scapegoats and that takes around two turns to get rid of, right? Yes. And the surah priest just completely negates that and it puts a lot of pressure on the field. The second thing, it is immune to anything like snatch steel or I don't know. Opponent has really hard time keeping up with Asura because Asura can also destroy all of your opponent's flip flip cards and you know I think it's a really really great card. Uh, I think you should also point out because I think it's one of the most important things to mention in this deck that it does not really uh, rely so much on monarchs to uh, yeah. to provide pressure so that's why Asuras yeah. and Blade Knights are good on their own as well. I wanted to say uh, to tell that later on because uh, <laughs> you know this deck actually has uh, two main engines and one is to summon a monarch and beat over beat the hell out of them and the second one is just having normal beaters in case you cannot summon a monarch or if you're waiting for appropriate moment to summon monarch because I wouldn't like to have monarchs just to be a uh, card like, you know, win more or lose more. I want to have monarchs, you know, for specific situ situations when my beaters cannot get over something or if I'm really scared of something. And that's that's the time when monarchs just shine, you know. They're just that backup utility for your other beaters. And I think this is where my path really um, sets abroad from every other monarch deck. Yeah, okay. L l let's uh, see... Uh, my version because it will really show this difference that you just mentioned yeah. you mean the water uh, soul control uh, yes for example you see this deck has no other engine ex I, I mean actually this is not the correct version this is something that i was messing with the actual version was this uh, with three mobiles three testalas as as you can see here there is nothing that will kill you other than monarchs yeah uh, that's, so that's this deck really really does rely on monarchs yeah uh, but you know you have to point out that monarchs are really really easy to kill especially if your opponent has thousand tight restrict or um, i don't know just tender to kuyomi yeah monarchs die to an ordinary trap so you know they are big but they are really hard to summon and you know they have beneficial effect but they are not that fast that's that's the problem with them they're not right. that fast in you know, some would say that gold format isn't a fast-paced, uh, you know, format. But when you get into it, you will see how really fast it is. Yeah, tempo is important and uh, stuff like that, of course. Yeah, and you see, um, when you have power cards like Pot of Greed, the Lincoln Duo, you know, if a, your opponent drops the Lincoln Duo on you and you have, you know, deck that relies on summoning monarchs, you're just screwed because you have two cards less to summon your monarch and monarch really requires some setup to be summoned yeah, before. Yeah, right. You no, know, you have to have back row, you need to have presence on the field, you need to have, you know, soul control, brain control, anything. So yeah, um, should I just keep going? <laughs> Oh damn it! Now oh. I I messed the order that I created before. Ah, uh, don't don't worry about it. So next up we have Breaker, the Magical Warrior, because you know a generic level four, it's dark, it supports uh, BLS and just really generic beater. Um, further on we also have a Beast Soldier, which is rarely seen, but uh, as you see, um, he's really great in this deck because I also run Premature Burial, but I'll get to that later. And you can use it with Sinister Serpent or even Mobius if you need to. So, you know, you have two options. Um, and I found a lot of situations when a Beast Soldier really, really hurt, helped me out. Because, you know, you just don't slam a Beast Soldier on the field and use the effect whenever you can. But you, if you wait for an appropriate moment, it's a game changer, really, it is. Um, and so, last but not least, we came we come to the monarch setup. Of course, we play three Testalos because why? Testalos is the best monarch, no matter what you say. Why is that? Because Testalos targets your opponent's hand, and Goat Control is a pace format, and you know the advantage counts. No one will set everything because of the heavy storm or summon anything because Torrential or Mirror. So, opponent usually always has at least three, four cards in your hands, and Testalos just never misses. It occasionally hits Sinister Serpent, but you know, it is to be expected. Um, okay. Second thing to just hit, one more it's thing. really good, comes to time. Yeah. Uh, well, I, 
just to point this out, like you said before, this deck was built mostly for uh, Ljubljana's tournament, where there was yeah. mostly control, gold control decks. Now, unfortunately, with the rising popularity of Chaos Turbo, you will yeah. also hit Thunder Dragons or Night, As Night Assailants a lot, so this is unfortunate, but I would still play 3 Testalos. Yeah, you know, it's really, um, you know, occasional card, but it's better to hit something and take that from your opponent than, you know, slamming another Mobius and hitting a chainable back row that really puts you in behind or yeah. just having Grand Mark, which targets something and then that thing just activates and you're without anything. So Testalust is the safest choice, safer and safest choice because it will always hit something and, you know, at least he deals damage or I don't know. Second thing, we have one Zaborg because I wanted to include uh, one monster uh, that is light and uh, uh, monster remover on the field. I chose him over uh, Grandmark because Grandmark targets only face downs and if a Grandmark targets anything that's chainable, you know, that uh, the effect doesn't come through. So Zaborg is really good when you need to, um, you know, take out something like Cow Sorcerer, BLS, or really if your opponent has two monsters on the field, you know, you can just slam Soul Exchange and put the Borg on the field. It's a really good card. But I wouldn't play more than one, at least not in this version of the deck, because it gets breaking, you know, you really need targets. If your opponent has one monster and you, you only have Soul Exchange, you need to set her the Borg or it will die. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And like you said, so uh, the, the two monster situation. Uh, especially in Chaos Turbo matchup, will come up really often, so it is it is nice, you know. Uh, yeah, and you see, <laughs> so, uh, the monarchs here are just the utility box. You know, you have your beaters, but you know you have your extra beaters with you know just really fluffy effects. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> you know, <laughs> slamming the. Pit. <laughs> it's really uh, like Badger would say, e extraordinary. <laughs> and last but not least, we also have one Mobius because you know. It's really good if your opponent knows that you have Mobius because uh, first thing, he will not overcommit, but even if he doesn't know, well, you can punish him the first game with summoning Mobius, but usually when your opponent sees that you're playing Monarchs, he will assume that you're playing Mobius and, you know, it's really a good card when you need to get rid of something like, I don't know, if your opponent has skill drain, you know, you can just slam that on and, you know, if you have <laughs> compulsed, you can actually out the effect. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, but it, it will it will not very uh, often come that uh, yeah. skill drain will, will actually hurt you because your monsters are usually bigger <laughs> than his. Yeah, but still, you know, you have no idea. If he has BLS, you're completely screwed, you know. But it's okay. really situational and back row removal is never a bad choice. That's what I'm of trying course, to say. Of course, of course, yes. So, um, further on, we go to spells, or would you like to ask something else? Uh, well, just regarding the Mobius, uh, I think it's important to say that you have to be careful how you play your cards, because uh, yeah, of course. you if have to think at least you... one turn ahead, right? Yeah. But so that you, when again, you summon... You have, think, yeah, you have to think of what you're having said, because if your opponent has anything chainable that destroys your own back row, it could really, really hurt you, because... Every trap you have, it's really essential for your build because at all costs you, sh you should protect your beater. So, yeah. Right. Um, but again, with uh, the rising popularity of Chaos Turbo, now, you know, before you were afraid of dust tornadoes, but now there is Rageki breaks, so you can't really help with that. If if you hit Rageki break, then you're set. So no matter what. Yeah, that's yeah. That's true. Okay. But, um, okay, let's just go to spells and we'll come back. But, oh, no, I have one thing uh, more to say. We play five monarchs with a purpose because we really, really tested a lot. And the number five was the most successful numbers for monarchs. We actually did math behind two. So we want to draw at least one monarch, but not more than one monarch. So we've established that the number five is the most consistent. Right, and uh, the three soul exchange is also correct, not less than three. Yeah, yeah but I'll get to that now. <laughs> First of all, we have our standard trip, uh, the link with trio. <laughs> trio. And then we have, <laughs> yeah. of course. <laughs> okay, then let's of course just we have get the staples away. 
Uh, of course, we have the heavy storm, uh, snatch steel, and two uh, noblemen because you know I was playing a lot against uh, God Control, so it doesn't go without that. Um, uh, I included premature burial, even uh, even in aggro. Some people would say that it's not really good in this deck, but a beast soldier makes it really, really wor worth it. And something like you know, um, a blade knight. Blade Knight is a good target, or, you know, if you need to tribute something, you can just pop that on Sangan and then summon your Monarch. But, you know, I found out that Premature Burial really did the job, but mostly with Abyss Soldier and Sinister Serpent combo. And that's just one little combo you can do with those three cards. Or, you know, if you have Mobius, you can discard that as well. But it's a really good game changer. Uh, if you have Tempo and you just need the damage, you can go with that. Or if you need to come back, it's a really good card. Yeah, pretty much then, for 2040, a lot of players don't expect that, so... Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Further on, we have two scapegoats and two metamorphoses. Uh, let's start with two scapegoats. I play two, not three, because I found that the three is just too much for um, standard um, beat-down beat decks. And... Uh, but at the same time, two is the correct choice because sometimes you don't have uh, the defense and, you know, having four tokens and giving you uh, two or one or two rounds more uh, to draw a correct card is really the way to go. So the ships are not just meant to be used with metamorphosis. They're really a good, uh, I would say, uh, defenders. I play two metamorphoses for, uh, of course, summoning the Thousand Eyes Restrict, with it, which is really the best Monarch card because, you know, first you take your opponent's monster and then you, sum, uh, you tribute the Restrict to pop out the additional Monarch effect. So you actually go plus two in that exchange. Second thing is metamorphosis allows you to have uh, more of a utility. So you can actually um, go into your extra deck, you can summon uh, Ryu Senshi, Reaper of the Nightmare, basically anything, Dark Bar Balter, because I have the Borg, I can summon Balter, I have four level sixes, I can summon Ryu Senshi, but most of the times, at least against Goat Control, I opted with Ryu Senshi because it uh, negates uh, trap cards and it's really good because your opponent cannot snatch steal it, and you know, if you're down the tempo, it's a really, really good card, and the second thing that's really good about it, it, it does not die to Tsukuyomi. That's a really, really important thing in this deck. You're opting for cards that do not die to Tsukuyomi. So, for example, if your opponent has uh, two or three cards more and you have, you know, just the combo, uh, standard uh, Monarch on the field and Metamorphosis in hand, you just opt to go into Ryu Senshi because, you know, the Tsukuyomi is always a threat. So. Yeah, I'm playing two because uh, usually I play it with Sinister Serpent or Ship Tokens or just for the utility. And I found that three bricks and two is just generally good because it, it, is, it is nice to see one Metamorphosis but no two in the starting hand. And same goes for Scapegoats. It's, it's really good to see one even if you don't have Metamorphosis because, you know, it's chainable. You can just set it and if your opponent MSTs it or break, Breaker... Uh, kills it you know it just pops on the field and it's a really good staple i would say right and the last for the spell cards are three soul exchanges the reason i play soul exchange over brain control is because soul exchange is the safer option and uh, it does not die with book of moon like brain control does uh, or snatch steel um, when it comes to monarchs uh you would really like to see that your uh, soul cards go uh, into play and are not really optionary you know they die to compulsory but further on you have a monster to tribute no matter if it's face up or face down and it's just another card that hates flip cards so you can just target his set moth or any other flip cards and you know have a monarch on the field and even if you can't attack it's really really good to just have field presence and i would gladly sacrifice one turn uh, or one attack tempo just for that uh, the summoning is always 100 percent guaranteed mm -hmm. and right. i think it's the correct way to play soul exchange over brain control and uh, especially except... combos like multiple yeah. scapegoats metamorphosis and soul exchanges in one turn can out uh, really nasty boards yeah but 
even uh, soul exchanges are really really nice because uh, as you see when your opponent has a face up monster and you have nothing in your hand you can still use soul exchange with metamorphosis so that's just another uh, side tech you can use <clears throat> if you don't have anything Let's you, take it if your opponent has BLS, you can just make Gatling Dragon out of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, or... It gets out of some sticky situation, so I, I really, really like it. And I, would, I wouldn't build a Monarch deck without using three solo exchanges, and that's just my point of view. I and... completely agree with that. Statement, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, we come to the trap options. We have nine trap cards. First of all, uh, of course, we have uh, Ring of Destruction, uh, Mirror Force, and Torrent Tribute. I would say that those three are staples. Then I opted to use two uh, Sakuretsu armors, and Sakuretsu armor was mostly used to uh, object your opponent from using Tsukuyomi or attacking with it. Um, because, as I said, Tsukuyomi was the main threat against uh, playing to go to control decks and you know I really could not afford uh, Tsukuyomi killing one of my monarchs and you know just promptly using this effect over and over again on Thousand Eyes Restrict or anything the Tsukuyomi was my priority to kill because you know Tsukuyomi flips flips monster destroys monarchs flips Thousand Eyes Restrict it's a really really good card and I did not want my opponent to have it I uh, have okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I would just ask you here because I think it's a good time to ask uh, some other solutions that were tried by other players and other decks to get rid of Tsukuyomi's these are for example dash shoots or uh, yeah I have it inside you see but you do not use it versus goat control right uh, I do not use it no because as I said First, you need to anticipate the uh, Tsukuyomi. Second, your opponent needs to have four cards. And when it comes to goat control, and if your opponent game two knows that you have trap dash shoots, it's really yucky because he will always have three cards. So trap dash shoot, in my opinion, is too. It has too many options, and I do not like the uh, having four or more cards in your hand. Uh, second thing, you know. It's good to see your opponent's hand, but it does not guarantee a Tsukuyomi hit. And if your if your opponent uses Tsukuyomi and kills your monarch, and the next turn you use dash shoot, Tsukuyomi already did its job. So, you know, trap dash shoot is just too late or too risky of a play for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why I prompted to using Sakuretsu armor. If it, mean, even uh... if it's or anything you know of it course gets... i agree with uh, using battle traps i was just asking to to yeah. to show the, the the reasoning behind so uh next one we use i use i use call of the hunted because i really like using call of the hunted on sangen or abyss soldier or basically any beater uh, when it comes to game ending situation or you know just putting more pressure on the field but most of the times you just use it when something goes wrong and you would like to uh, get your attack through. So Call of the Hunted, I see, I think it's a staple here because you're playing beaters or even if you, if, even if you set Call of the Hunted first turn, second turn, you summon your Blade Knight and you attack your opponent set, then your opponent activates something like Mirror Force, Sakuretsu or Torrential, not Torrential, but Mirror or Saku. You can just use Call of the Haunted and put that uh, Blade Knight again and, you know, just have another strike at that uh, flip card. So, again, I would say that Call of the Haunted is good because it's actually just a battle trap. In most, in most situations, you would just like to get rid of your opponent's flip. So, that's why I'm prompting to use Call of the Haunted over anything else. And... Uh, Last of, uh, last of my traps are two compulsories. Uh, I really, really love compulsories in this deck. I actually played three, and in different situations, I still play three. Reason behind this because compulsory gets rid of Thousand Eyes Restrict, and it gets rid of it efficiently. Uh, your opponent cannot use Book of More on, or anything else. Second thing is really good when your opponent uses something like Book or Knock. You can just put your Monarch back to hand or I don't know, if your opponent tries to banish your monarch and you have another soul exchange in your hand, you can just put your monarch back to hand you know, and 
next round you just punish him by summoning again that monarch. So Compulsory is really, really good with this deck and it uh, has many, I would say, great points and it adds to, adds to the consistency of the deck because it really uh, goes fluently with all monsters and spell cards. So, you know, it's just a binding element, I would say. <clears throat> and of course, the last and the uh, most spicy. Uh, just one comment for compulsory. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I think the compulsory is better than Book of Moon in this deck in basically almost every aspect. Uh, yeah. Except in the fact that with Book of Moon you still can out Tsukuyomi, but with Compulsory, unfortunately, you can't. Yeah. But uh, as you said, it has many other. Um... Yeah, but at the same time, it does not out Tsukuyomi, but it outs Thousand Ties Restrict. So if you cannot actually destroy Thousand Ties Restrict, it flips back up and you're screwed again. But yes. Compulsory. So you, you, des so. you decide for Compulsory because it has so many other uh, pros yeah. compared to Book of Moon, okay. You know, I already have answers for Tsukuyomi, but I have no really good answers for Thousand Eyes Restrict. So I wanted to incorporate that beside Ring of Destruction, because Ring of Destruction outs also, but you know, your opponent can still use something like, like Book of Moon. And yeah, last but not least, my favorite card of the deck. <laughs> yeah, you heard me. It's Kill Drain. Well, why you ask? Because Kill Drain completely negates uh, goat control decks. You know, <laughs> if your opponent cannot out Kill Drain, you, you just won because you have bigger bits. <laughs> my man, I will tell you how many times I lost just to this single card. And even from situations where I was like plus three in advantage, and then just <laughs> suddenly it goes downhill. All that needs to happen <laughs> is for you to not have Dust Tornado, and then you lose. <clears throat> it's basically, you know, I summon something like uh, a Beast Soldier, and you have nothing to kill that Beast Soldier, and you can just set cards and pass and pass Yeah, and pass my, my, and... my hand with triple metamorphosis to Kuyomi, <laughs> a, a magical merchant. Yeah, but it's really good when you caught people, like, you know, he's making big plays, he's uh, actually flipping merchant, and, you know, you're you're fine with merchant, you don't want to use skill drain on a fucking merchant, because, you know, you want to use it on something like Moth, you know, and then your opponent summons Tsukuyomi and wants to flip that merchant back down, and, you know, you pop that skill drain and he just looks devastated, you know, that's the beauty behind this deck. Yeah. <laughs> And some players uh, will, uh, without thinking, play uh, thousand ices in attack position all the time, <laughs> and then you will take two thousand forty damage <laughs> from uh, the monarch. Yeah, the skill drain is really juicy, juicy card. But you know, you don't want to play more than two because you have no idea what your opponent will draw. And most of the times, so he can get rid of it. But if you're a clever boy and you just set one card and that card is skill drain, it can save you. At ton of a ton of but you know trouble <laughs> so how much would you say just for fun or, or how 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 much uh percentage of the games you win just by skill train that you would not win without it oh uh you mean uh i'll, I'll only take the uh the options when i actually draw the skill train you meant that right yeah and that you <laughs> could you could not possibly win those games if you didn't have the skill train I think it really comes a lot to that. When Whenever I have skill drain in my hand, you know, I'm really patient and I save it. And most of the times, you know, monarchs can become really cloggy. I know, I know it sounds really weird, but it happens quite often that you draw like three monarchs and you're playing <laughs> five in 40 card decks. And the first time you have three monarchs and, you know, the second card is skill drain and you know that's the beauty of skill drain it helps me out a ton because i can put pressure on the field and you know at least i would say 75 to 85 percent of the games skill drain really outdoes outshines every other card in this deck it's really really a great choice and i love it because it's at one because Sometimes uh, activating skill drain hurts myself because I cannot use the effect of my monsters. And so the skill drain is really optionary and you want to use it at the right moment. Uh, except if you're playing against something like, you know, goat control, standard goat control, then using skill drain is a bit easier because they don't have a lot of beat sticks, I would say. Yes. 
So I think basically every your every monster is basically bigger than their every monster. So exactly, yeah. except big shield guard. And you know another good thing is if you have nothing and you have skill sh uh, skill drain and big shield guard, now you have basically the ultimate defense. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, something that I would say the badger combo. So. Uh, they would attack your shield gardener once uh, with a weak monster just to flip it to attack position <laughs> and then you yeah. get skill drain on the attack and it will stay in defense yeah the beautiful thing around this uh, i've actually seen it before because i i still play on dueling book a lot and some uh, your opponent uses knock it flips your uh, the shield garner he summons two monsters <laughs> and he attacks with the weaker one to give me more damage but when he attacks with the weaker yes. man, you just kill drain and bam there goes half of your hp man <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah the deck is actually really really fun to play as well so if you have the opportunity please try it and um a second thing i would like to say is that the deck, deck is really consistent uh, at least in the majority of times, you know, you can't really help it if you draw three monarchs. That's just bad luck, I would say. Um, you can get around that by, you know, shuffling your deck real good, but sometimes that just happens. You, you can't help it. But you have, like, three games to prove that out, so there's no way you, you're going to draw three monarchs in all three games. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to grind this deck so you can actually become good at it because uh, you know if you just put this game uh, deck into your pr perspective and go play with it uh, i think that the first 10 games are going to go rather badly because um, i wouldn't like to diss anyone using this <laughs> deck uh, um, you like make me say... laugh because we i i remember we made a review uh, of me playing against some other guy who used your deck and we just spotted yeah. so many misplays yeah i would like to uh, i would like to say that every card in this deck is here for a reason and when you actually grind uh multiple games with this deck you come to uh, observation that certain cards are need to be used at a certain moment and you just don't throw them on the field for no reason or just to put out flat damage. I mean, you never attack with Blade Knight turn 2 if your opponent didn't set anything. You know, you want to have the element of surprise. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, this deck really requires some grinding. But when you uh, come to uh, the perspective I'm in, you're going to see that every card has its place and... When you uh, become aware of that and when you know when to use a certain card, I can tell you, you can win really a lot with this card and Alan can confirm that. Um, uh, yes, actually, yes, of course. One other guy played uh, my deck um, for the first time in Slow Goats um, Slovenia tournament and he was the second. Um, I gave him the deck list, I think, a few days before and he just played a couple of games. It was Matija. And he did really good. He said he said he liked my deck. Let's see so, if I have so yeah, if his deck is here maybe. Uh, succeed, uh, succeed played my game, my deck, and um, okay, it's not. Yeah, he was the second, not the winner. So yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I think it was this on this event. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he said. <laughs> yeah, he I actually like played deck. him in the finals. <laughs> Uh, but uh, for Arlen, it is really easy to play around my deck because he knows every single card in it and he can anticipate my moves. But when you're playing against a player that doesn't have a lot of knowledge about Monarchs, you can really, really outshine him. You know, just the big shield Garner, you know, set that card when you have nothing else to do and your opponent uses knock, that's a free plus one. What You cannot argue with that. That's a great thing to do. And the second thing, your opponent will never uh, anticipate monarchs in a bit down deck like this. So, you know, when he sees a uh, soul exchange, he's just gonna go pale. And then you can use that Mobius on double back row, you know, just obliterate everything. Or, you know, you can just take whatever he has and use Test Testolos for plus one and laugh whatever you discard from his hand. Usually it's Sinister Serpent or, in Alan's case, BLS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Uh, I'm really proud of this deck because uh, I never really played competitive and this is my first, uh, I would say, deck that I built by myself. I, I mean, majority of cards I added here by myself and I play tested a shit ton of hours in it. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's like having your own child, but other people with this will diss it. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. You, you really always, uh, when you came to GOAT format, uh, you really always uh, strived to play Monarchs, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there wasn't a single game that I wouldn't play Monarchs, you know, and at the beginning I was really a poopy player. I did not know a lot of uh, things about GOAT format, but when I came into meta and I saw what other, people's, other people were playing, I adapted to that. And as you see, my site is not really something, uh, you know, it really uh, shows what people in my tournament were playing. So that's why I'm using these cards. And of course, you're... Um, you should use your own ones, um, depending on the meta you're playing. So yeah, um, do that uh, in whatever case you would like. So uh, other version of this deck uh, that you can actually cite into is, you know, you can add some more warriors like Lead Warrior Lady or uh, level two swordsman and use one rota because you have already two blade knights and a big shield gardener but that is really really situational and i'm just saying that that's another engine you can opt to if you would like to change anything about this deck so right the, the monarchs are really unique in the fact that they have so many versions and they are so highly untested <laughs> so it's really interesting yeah. Uh, because yeah. yeah nobody plays monarchs yeah because you know monarchs are really some would say they are really strong, but they are slow paced because they require a turn to set up. But as you see, my deck is playing three soul exchanges, two uh, metamorphoses, and a snatch steel. So that's six card that allows me to tribute uh, opponent's monster, I would say. Then again, I have premature and call of the haunted. That's eight cards that allow me to tribute. And I have. Um, monsters that I can tribute. Those are Sangen, Sinister Serpent, and Big Shield Gardna, and of course, uh, the Twin-Headed Behemoth, which is always, always used for a Monarch. So that's a grand total of 12 cards you can actually use for a tribute summon, and uh, nothing would go wrong. So, you know, you have a shit ton of cards you can use for summon, for some, uh, to summon five Monarchs. And the good thing uh, around that is Metamorphoses are not always used for uh, tributing, uh, getting Thousand Tides Restrict and tributing it into a Monarch. So, you know, you can make a Monarch, but it is not really uh, always the situation. So you don't have to. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's always just nice to have an option. Okay. <clears throat> I think we I think we won't go uh, deep into details of the side deck, um, because as you said before we started recording, it's really um, it depends on where, when and why you play. Uh. Yeah, uh, another thing you can uh, we can say to the spectators is how many cards actually are in this deck that hate flip cards. <laughs> we can count them. We have two Blade Knights, then we have one Zaborg, then we have two Nox, we have three Soul Exchange, we have uh, 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 Skill Drain, uh, and yeah, of course, we have the metamorphosis as well. Um, so yeah, that's a shit ton. Did I forget something? And of course, you can reborn those uh, blade knights or anything else that hates flip monsters. So it's really, really good to have cards like that because when you're playing against a standard goat control, it's really, really nice to see at least one card that hates flip monsters. Yeah, so this was one of the premises of the deck, right? To to try to always have a counter for the flip. Yeah, yeah. I was really salty about always getting hit with Magician of Fate, and you know my opponent getting that sexy plus plus one or plus two at the moment, and yeah, it, it didn't feel good. So uh, my arch enemy was always the moth. <laughs> yeah, uh, as is always, right? <laughs> To be honest, it is so. You know, with those many beaters, you can really opt to uh, hunt for your opponent's moth. So, it's uh, if you think that he has the Koichi or you know Merchant, and you uh, you're not hurt if you uh, if he gets the effect off, you can just use something like Twin Headed Behemoth and run over that. 
and you can still save the back uh, the flip removal for a card that really haunts you and for a situation when you do not have any idea what he said so yeah that's just my um thinking about it okay um would you like to say anything else yeah um, another thing i would like to say is that uh, a lot of times you will have trouble summoning bls if you have no idea what you're doing um, you need to be wary of your uh, lights and you need to be wary that uh, metamorphosis is a lot of time used to provide a dark material material in your graveyard for BLS you know uh, you can use uh, you can use it to make firewall dragon uh, not firewall uh, that uh, level 4 dark dragon uh, dark fire, dark fire yeah. uh, sorry about that <laughs> my meta game crushed <laughs> <laughs> so you know you uh, you have you need to have dark in your graveyard because uh, the only two darks in your main are uh, breaker and sangan and yeah so Good thing that Thousand Tides Restrict is dark, so it's not that hard to get your to get dark material in your graveyard, but you need to be wary of that. So if you you have if you're drawn uh, BLS in the beginning, uh, most of the times I use it as a discard for if my opponent has the link with duo because I know that for some time I will not be able to summon it. But in the late game. Uh, when you haven't seen your BLS, you should be really wary of your metamorphosis play, so you can actually uh, have an option to summon BLS. So, yeah. But I and... still want to include BLS because it's a game-breaking card, actually. And, you know, it just ends game so fast if your opponent doesn't have a response. So I think that it should always be included. Before that, I was uh, running more darks. Uh, I, I think I was playing uh, some uh, Donza Lug and Rota, but I excluded Premature and uh, a Beast Soldier. But I uh, I came to the reconsideration of putting a Beast Soldier and Premature back in it because they're really a bit more consistent and better. Because Donza Lug is a lot of time just set uh, and pass. And when your opponent uses knock on your Donza Lug, you know. That's not really what your deck aims to. You want to negate your opponent's knocks. So yeah, yeah right. O only Big Shield Gardena should be the card you set in this build. It's really sad that Big Shield Gardena and uh, is not dark, and that the Behemoth is wind for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are weird. Uh, I mean, okay, I could, I can go behind the Earth for the Gardena, but this wind is okay. It's yeah. a dragon, I guess, but. <laughs> It's a flappy dragon. It's a windy boy. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, Twin-Headed Behemoth was dark, it would really, really, really set the premises for Monarchs, I would say. And shame that it's only once per duo, because I, you know what, that, that I would play three of them if I could. <laughs> right. So yeah, um, we've come this far. I think that uh, from my perspective, deck is quite completed. You can, of course, use your own strategy, uh, play whatever you'd like to play. Um, of course, it would need some moderation if you're playing against, you know, Chaos Turbo or something like that. But uh, we're not that far away from it. And, of, uh, yeah, there's something else I would like to say. Um, the only two cards that do not go really together in this deck are uh, Blade Knights and Scapegoats. Of course. Yeah, those two just do not run great together but at the same time one does not go without the other because blade knight is light and it destroys flip monsters and scapegoat is really my defensive tech option that i use uh, it's really good for metamorphosis i cannot play metamorphosis without scapegoats and at the same time if i do not play scapegoat and i i found myself a lot of times in trouble because i have no field presence if my opponents uh my opponent can out two of two of my beaters uh, two rows so yeah um it's good to have a defensive option even if it if even if it's only for uh, you know you not taking damage so yeah. yeah this is a concession that you have to make in order to play all the good cards like bls and revivals you have to sacrifice something in this case some consistency i mean it's not really consistency it's just awkwardness 
Yeah, it's really awkward if you draw Blade Knight the second turn you activate its game codes, but uh, let's be honest, that doesn't happen really often, but when it does, it's painful, but you know, you have to get around that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, a nice, nice thing I would like to add is that Nine Traps are really, really good because uh, we had burn players and you know, Deciding to burn means playing three royal decrees and just other. <laughs> yes, we see the side here. You know, um, you need to have shit ton of cards in your back. <laughs> yeah, everything in my deck is actually really made to be used against them. So actually, yeah. this one comes in as well. You would side uh, like this for drain burn, right? Yeah, uh, in this version, yeah, um, and. Second cards in my side deck are, you know, against scapegoats. Uh, I would side that against uh, burn as well because, you know, using uh, more metamorphosis and uh, swaps. And uh, the last but not least, in this side deck, I have uh, uh, bro uh, pro uh, the seal for uh, library FTK. Yeah, this is for seal. our uh, one 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 guy that came to our locals with FTK. Holy shit, you know, it's it's really nice to draw this card when your opponent uses library and you have the upper hand and you go first. Yeah. yeah. Using it on giant through Nate really helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think on the same tournament when he came, I was playing three solemn, three dash shoot and three this. <laughs> I mean, fuck him. Yeah, I, th I think I played a solemn as well. Yeah, uh, when we go back to this, I actually made an article, I think, uh, the progress of this deck. This deck have seen everything. It had judgments in it. It had basically morphing jar in it. Uh, what else did it have? I mean, it yes. It had for your package, right? It's really unfortunate because I think we do have some pretty cool articles on here, but they are in Slovenian, so... Yeah, uh, so we would have to translate it, and the second thing, they might be a bit outdated since the meta changed, so... So, you see, uh, the 28th January 2019, Alin made, uh, uh, Siuski made an uh, article how to play against Monarchs, yeah, because, <laughs> because I was playing Monarchs so consistently and, you know, playing it always. So, yeah, he made really uh, a nice... Uh, article i would say and many people really uh, up their game against monarch because of that i was really uh, salty about that <laughs> so yeah we have a night a lot of nice articles but they're waiting for better days to be uh, translated so yeah this is it from me if you guys have any questions or anything you can just ask Suski and we can work that out but yes yeah, of course. this is deck. you um, know how to reach me uh and again, uh, thanks to Moki Moki for providing the platform for this video. And that's it, I guess. And of course, and of course, our usual sponsor, uh, Shrek 2. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have any peanuts to eat during this episode. Yeah, but we can still. <laughs> okay. Good. We, we better so, stop because I think this is more than one hour long now. Yeah. yeah. It's more so, like a podcast. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to have a podcast about anything really because, you know, we make a great pair of uh, shitting on people's decks except <laughs> our own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of the videos we made on my channel. Oh, my God. Yeah. You should check out Siuski channel. Like, okay. We can do that. Just uh, follow Slow Goats on YouTube. You're not going to regret it. Okay, shameless sh shameless self promotion on other people's channels. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks for watching. That's it. Uh, goodbye. See ya.